In this video we will go over all of the organs you can use in your armour including what each one does and whether that's a good thing. By the end of this video you should walk away with a full understanding of everything to do with armour augments. Without further delay, let's get into the video. Augmenting armour looks a little intimidating from the outside, but once you lay everything out on the table it's actually very very simple. There are two types of armour augment, special augments and stackables. Special augments are the ones you gain from researching and potentially after researching from drops. And stackables are simple augments that give flat buffs and are purchasable from general merchants such as the one on the Nexus. Special augments can only be attached to a specific armour slot, so legs, chest, arms etc. All stackable can be placed on all slots with the exception of kinetic coils which are specific to chest. So the general simple way to approach augmenting your armour is to look at each item individually, pick your special augment, then fill with stackables and job done. Because the augments work in this way we'll look at each armour piece with its special augments and then look at the stackable augments after as a whole. This one is nice and simple. There aren't any special augments for the helmet slot. You can only fill it with stackables. This is still good as just like the arms and legs with a default of two augment slots and a third from the cryo perk, that's a nice bit of buffage to just have there for a few credits spent. The arm slot has three special augments available to it. You can only pick one of them unfortunately so your other one to two augment slots would need to be filled with stackables. These augments focus on hover bonuses. The Aerial Lubricant Augment increases tech damage by 35% when hovering. The other two mimic this in the other fields, with Aerial Performance Optimizer Augment increasing combat damage by 35% while hovering, and the Aerial Stabilizer increasing biotic damage by 35% while hovering. The lack of the word power in their descriptions makes me think these cover a little broader spectrum than most, but I can't be certain how it is applied. I am certain it will cover your powers in that field, so it's very good. Using these augments in weapons are a bit of a bust, as while they have value, they take the place of something that has more value. But in the armour, these three are your only special options, and they are better than a stackable, so it is definitely worth taking the best one to suit your primary power profile. The legs is another simple and cool one. As with the arms, there are three special augments available. These all focus on boosting your melee damage when performing a jump melee. They increase the damage by 50% and give it a damage type. Shield Disruptor makes the damage an electric type, while Heat Inducer makes it heat, and Cryo Condenser makes it cold damage. The big problem I have with these is that they are very, very powerful augments when used in weapons. But you are unlikely to use them all in weapons so the best option would be to use whichever you don't in a weapon. For example, I intend to use a Shield Disruptor in my Anti-Architect build, as well as Heat Inducer in other builds, so I'll use Cryo Condenser here. I'm not aware whether these give your Jump Melee a priming function with the type it delivers. If anyone can confirm or deny it in the comments, I'll pin your comment so others can easily verify. The chest slot is the big one, having 6 special augments and 1 stackable specific to it. It is also the largest piece, having 4-5 to five augment slots available depending on the cryo perk. The first one here is electrical conduits. This shocks enemies who melee you for a good bit of electrical damage while also stunning them. Whether this stuns shielded and armoured is unknown, but logically I would say yes shielded but no to armoured. This could be very very powerful to Vanguard, or anyone who likes to get super close really. Then there's rebalanced field coils that increases your accuracy by 10% when standing still. This is useless for some but hugely useful for others. Anyone who regularly shoots a fully automatic or burst weapon from cover will get a big boost from this. As far as I've been able to tell the hidden stat stability is somewhat held by accuracy. Not hugely, but I do think it adds a little. This of course is little used to snipers whose weapon is already crazy high in the accuracy and if you only use remnant weapons this would also be a pointless venture. Battlefield Assist module is next giving you plus 25 damage resistance when your health drops to 20% or lower. This sounds great, quite powerful, but I disagree. Every defensive skill or buff you want prevents you from reaching that 20% mark. Even as a heavy bio converter user I rarely hit 20%. Not only that, but that means your shields are gone by this point too. I would suggest not using this and focusing more on preventing your health getting that low in the first place. 
Power Booster is a similar organ, giving you a 25% increase to power stats to affect duration when your health is 30% or below. Powerful and activated, yes, but again, I'd focus more on staying above that. How often do you plan to be below 30% health? The next one is Shield Oscillator. Now this is probably the best out of the lot, providing everyone with a good way to buff your shield recharge. When placed in the chest piece, it will give you 25% shield on every kill. A lot of insanity players build a gun specifically to boost shield with this organ. You build a one or close click gun using clip reducing mods etc then you get 25% shields every time you shoot after a recharge or reload. Unfortunately that only really suits certain heavy power users, whereas using the shield oscillator in your chest piece is a great one for everyone. This is definitely my recommendation for everyone except those who live in melee who still benefit from it, but may wish to go for the electrical conduits for the stun. The last one is Shield Sensors, which has a 25% chance on Shield Break to give you 10% health. Now depending on whether your health is heavily buffed or not would determine whether this augment is any good for you. Even if your health is heavily buffed and you use bioconverters a lot with their team sport, you banking on this slot being only useful when you lose your shield seems a little reckless. Use the oscillator to make sure that never happens in the first place. The kinetic coil, while not a special augment, can only be placed in the chest part as far as armour goes, and this is likely to prevent you from stacking huge amounts of damage resistance, as that's what it gives you, plus 5 damage resistance, which is far more powerful than it sounds. If you struggle to take a few hits, then this is a great filler for your chest piece as a default. For other options, let's look at the stackables. So stackable augments are great. You can, as the tier name suggests, stack as many as you can fit. There are a total of 18 stackable augments for armour. 17 if you don't include kinetic coils, which as stated a few seconds ago, can only be used on the chest piece. The first six are easy to go over. Three of them are damage boosters for biotic tech and combat power. Biotic damage booster provides 2% increase to biotic power damage. Tech damage module provides 2% increase to tech power damage and combat power module provides a 2% increase to combat power damage. Nice and simple, flat, small, but effective increases to damage. Then there's biotic recharge module, tech recharge module, and combat recharge module. They all give a 2% increase in their respective power recharge speeds. If anything, I being a tech power user with a primary focus on weapons through combat, would gain far more from tech recharge than tech damage as my tech powers I generally use to debuff and enhance my weaponry as opposed to being damaging powers in their own right. Their damage is just a bonus to me. Thinking like this will allow you to get the most out of your gear and augments by making the right choices. The other 11 cover pretty much everything else you may want to buff with ones like the Medigel Regulator which provides a 2% increase to maximum health or the Shield Booster which provides a 2% increase to maximum shields. Maybe you don't want to boost to the max, but you want a better regen. The shield generator gives a 2% increase to your shield's regeneration. If you already use powers that provide defensive or restorative bonus, then you'll probably find better using the support power module, which gives a 2% increase to power restoration defense. If you wish to focus your efforts to armor or shield specifically, there is an anti-armor module and shield bypass unit, respectively, which I personally would not advise you use. If it gave more than the standard 2% increase, I'd be all up for it, but as it doesn't, you'd be better off just boosting your specific power type and having that buff effective for all enemies. The last four finish things up nicely, giving you four different and useful for some options. The Duration Boost module gives 2% increase to all power effect durations. The Reaction Optimizer gives 2% increase to all combo damage. The Reaction Displacer increases all combo radiuses by 2% and the Newtonian Multiplier gives a 2% increase to power force. To summarise and collect our thoughts, for the arms, definitely worth using one of those special organs for almost everyone. The one you choose simply depends on which power type you use primarily. For the legs, it is likely that you would benefit at some point, but hold these particular organs uses in weapons as a much larger priority, unless you are a heavy melee user. For the chest I would recommend the shield oscillator for almost everyone, with maybe the electrical conduits for heavy melee users or just vanguard that already use a one shot shield regen weapon. Also if you take damage somewhat often, fill that chest with kinetic coils after the special organ for some extra sponginess. For the stackable organs there are different choices for all. Look at what your powers are, if you deal high damage with them then you'll gain more from buffing that damage. If they are largely utility then recharge is most likely to help you. 
Do you focus on combos? If so, combo damage could be good. Or if you AoE, then combo radius. You heal or use a lot of tech armor powers, then power restoration defense. Whichever you focus on the most is going to be used the most and likely to be bigger than the rest. And as these augments all work on percentage, the bigger the original stat being buffed, the bigger the buff is. If you are after advice or information on fusion mods, I did a video all about them a little while ago. You can click the top right of the screen now to go to it or just click the link in the description. I hope you found that helpful, I wanted to cover all bases so likely went over something you already knew, but hopefully covered a thing or two that you didn't. If there's anything you're still unsure of then please let me know down below and I'll sort that out as soon as possible. Like if you liked, dislike if you didn't, subscribe if you haven't already and have an awesome day folks.